Welcome back to our continuing adventures on the Let's Defend platform. Today we are tackling the VIP challenge of Lockbit. Let's see, so the scenario, you are a digital forensics and incident response DFIR analyst tasked with investigating a ransomware attack that has affected a company system. The attack has resulted in file encryption and the attackers are demanding payment for the decryption of the affected files. You have been given a memory dump of the affected system to analyze and provide answers to specific questions related to the attack. And this is put together by M. Ox. M. Ox? Um, so we get a lockbit dot vmem file. Uh, it's roughly 400 megs compressed and extracts out to about 2 gigs. And we are given how many questions? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can you determine the date and time of the device that the device was infected with the malware? What is the name of the ransomware family responsible for the attack? What file extension is appended to the encrypted files by the ransomware? What is the TLSH, trend micro lo lo locality? Sensitive hash of the ransomware. What MITRE attack technique ID was used by the ransomware to perform privilege escalation? What is the SHA-256 hash of the ransom note dropped by the malware? And what is the name of the registry key edited by the ransomware during the attack to apply persistence to the infected system? So, in typical fashion... I have done a, a bit of pre-gaming. That is, yeah, kind of sort of expected. <laughs> All right, so let me get the transition in here for the VMware window. And so this is Remnox version 7. And so the first thing we do is we extract out the zip file and then we run sha256 sum space lockbit.vmem and we compare that as opposed to uh well we're basically i'm doing a comparison since i'm transferring from the local system into remnox i just want to verify that there were no issues and the hash comes back as perfectly acceptable good then we're basically pivoting it around to going through and calling volatility. So vol.py space image info space dash f space lockbit.vmem. And we're going to go through and let it do its business in order to give us suggested profiles. And we do. We get win7sp1x64. And in order to do a quick verification, we kick off bull.py space dash f space lockbit.vmem space dash dash profile equals win 7 sp1 x86 or x64 and then we run through the kdbg scan and we get back results ps active process head 46 processes, PS loaded module list, 158 modules. So this looks like this is something that will match. And then obviously we go through and we actually kick the tires by running through and doing a PS tree. And this is effectively where I just kind of stopped. We've done the pregame. We verified that, okay, the hash has been per, er, the hash has been verified of the VMEM file for the transfer, so there's no weird cosmic ray hiccup flipping a bit somewhere. Um, and then we've gone through and done some of the legwork in terms of establishing which profile we need to use for the VMEM image, uh, memory dump, um, and then verified it with the KDG or KDBG scan to verify, okay, we have... Um, 
processes and the like that are coming through. So let's see, we got the remote desktop. Oh, here we go. Here's something that looks off. Mal.exe. <laughs> uh, and we have a relative start time of 4-13-2023. UTC. Let me take a look and see as to whether or not And it looks like the way that's formatted will fit. Year, 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 month, day, day. Yeah, so they are doing year, month, day, since there is no 13 month. At least not as it sits right now. <laughs> okay, so we basically just take that start time in there, and we're going to have to back off the UTC aspect and we'll do a submit and that is the correct answer off the PS tree or was it PS list so 2023-04-13 space 10 colon 06 colon 45 and again we are effectively pulling that by running through doing a PS tree you could also do PS list and then effectively since the time is the last column that's where we're pulling the answer from and just because of the fact that okay they're not doing a whole heck of a lot in terms of trying to hide this thing because it's just mal.exe that is not a, a typical Windows process in the like so, our next portion is, what is the name of the ransomware family responsible for the attack? And so, of course, we get the aspect of, okay, upload the ransom note or a sample of the malware to this virus total or similar online malware analysis tool to determine the name of the ransomware family. But I'm fairly certain that it's just going to be Lockbit, you know, as it's aptly named. But... And that obviously is it. So let's actually go through and follow the instructions for the hint. So we can, okay, if we weren't just taking a blind guess. So if this was a actual dump, we don't know what. So, okay, we, we weren't, weren't supplied something called Lockbit. We got, you know, um, maybe it was workstation1.vmem. So how are we going to go through and take a, a whack at that? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so what we're going to do is we know that the file name is mal.exe. So let's find a copy of it. So what we've got running is full.py space dash f space lockpit.vmem space dash dash profile equals win 7 sp1 x64 space file scan space vertical slash vertical line i forget what they call that space grep and mal mal so we are running the file scan so take a look through the image see what kind of files you can find and we want anything that effectively comes back and matches mal mal and so we can see, apparently, in C users Josh desktop, there is a copy of mal.exe, the same thing we saw from the PS tree command. And so far, nothing else has basically fallen out from this. And looks like nothing else will fall out from it. So if effectively, if it's running through Josh and everything else, let's just do this. I'm thinking ahead to a different question. 
we can expect that, okay, if mal.exe was run through Josh, we can expect that we're going to see a bunch of different files for Josh um, with odd file names and extensions. Like, I'm expecting to see um, the typical uh, changed file extension. I believe that was one of the questions, right? Yes? Yes, that's the next one. What file extension is appended to the encrypted files by the ransomware? So we will see as to what else will effectively shake out from the Josh account. Yeah, so far, nothing that stands out, really. But we'll only probably need to see it once to... ...actually get something from it. Hopefully. Maybe. Of course, the problem is now if Josh didn't have anything that it would encrypt, maybe it would be like in... Um, what is it? Public? And the other aspect is too, we could just sit there and run file scan and have it output into a text file that we could then cat and then grip for various aspects from there or just open up in, what is it, is it nano? Or whatever the uh, text file manipulation program is that defaults in Remnox. And I'm not seeing anything yet. I mean, there's, I, I saw a couple of, like, where they did a double extension of something dot BL. Oh, here we go. Josh dot contact dot lock bit. Web slice gallery dot URL dot lock bit. So if we just, okay, cancel that, yeah, that's fine. And instead of doing that, what if we just, just do grep lockbit, <clears throat> as opposed to just Josh? And then we should get a list of every single file that has been encrypted. I realize, yes, we're, we're kind of splitting off and going sideways a little bit. We've been able to confirm, so here comes everything else. All right, and we'll come back to that. So then obviously the answer is going to be dot lock bit for that one. Look for files on the system that have been encrypted by the ransomware and note the file extension. So at least we got confirmation. So now we need to kind of back up and go back to the aspect of, okay, trying to figure out what family this is. I mean, we've kind of confirmed it. Um, now, had we gotten something along the lines of um, some other ransomware infection that didn't use its name as the file extension, yeah, we would probably have to, we would definitely have to do a lot more digging in this regard. Yeah, and this thing's still just spitting it out. Which does make me kind of wonder, it's like, okay, what's the name of the, the readme file for this, or the, the ransom note? And actually, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to go through and basically have this written out to a file, and then we're going to go through and do roughly the same thing with the entirety. Um, 
console file scan. And then instead of any sort of grepping or anything else like that, I'm just going to do the, is it caret? Basically have it right out to a file. So let's, let's do this. Since we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fire this off again anyways. So we're gonna do a file scan. We'll do this and we're just gonna call it file scan text. And let it do its thing. And then I'm going to go back and do the whole aspect for Lockbit. Um, and do the same output uh, so I can get a list of the actual files, just uh, the ones that are a problem. And then in order to actually get the answer, I'll go through, dig through the entirety of the, the file scan expecting that we'll probably see it in like on the desktop for Josh um, and then see as to whether or not if we can pull a copy of that file um, and then same thing with the the mal.exe and then we go through and dump the stuff onto uh, virus total and we'll get confirmation from that particular aspect so I will be, well, back in a moment as it will exist in the video while this stuff goes and does its dumping. So again, I'm going to get the entire contents of the file scan. I'm going to sit there and just have that grepped for Lockbit and have that come out as a different set of results. Um, and I'm going to do the hunting and I'll probably pick up once I've got this file scan.txt. And we'll go from there. So, be back in a moment. Okay, so I was not able to sit there and digging through with the lock bit, find a, a README or a how to unlock your files. And without knowing the exact terminology, wasn't also able to find it on Josh's desktop. Even though I had the, the full scan through here. Um, so I'm hoping that, okay, go through and submit it. We'll be able to get a better idea as to what else we're potentially looking for. So I've gone through and done, um, found the location for the mal.exe off the file scan. So we sit there and switch out. So this part's gonna stay the same from here on in. So rather than just constantly repeat it, so vol.py space dash f space lockbit.vmem space dash dash profile equals win seven sp1 x64. And then the actual commands that are changing this time are dump files space dash n space dash dash dump dash dir equals slash tmp for the temp file directory uh, dash capital Q and then the address pulled from uh, for mal.exe so 0x multiple zeros 7 charlie delta echo 5320 and that goes through and we get the notion that okay yes the stuff has been dumped and inside we have dat and we have an IMG. And so now comes the aspect of getting the stuff uploaded to Virus Total. And what I am just going to do is we're just going to cut these. I'm just going to dump them inside of our lockbit folder where this stuff is getting work done. Oh, apparently I still had virus total open from last time I used. Or not open, but it remembered. So obviously I was using this to sit there and take a look at something else. Giant shock.
And so I am just going to take the, the DAT and the IMG, and we're just going to go through and see what shakes out from this particular point. So I will be back once this all figures out which way is up, which way is down, left, right, diagonal. Okay, got those two files, the DAT and the IMG, uploaded to virus total and refreshed them so that they are current. So if we entirely miss the aspect of all, a bunch of files being encrypted and their extension changed to dot lock bit, we would get popular er, from the samples, popular threat label, ransomware dot lock bit. And that's for the IMG. So if we bring up the, what should be the dat file then? We get, again, popular threat label, ransomware.lockbit, gen7. So, giving us exactly what we're looking for. Um, and then I believe if we go through and take a look at either relations or behavior, we could probably get some sort of better understanding as to what the um, ransom note file typically is from this particular aspect. Uh, I'm going to assume it's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be relations or what. 70 dropped files. Is there anything in there that basically just looks like a like an HTML file or anything else? I'd probably just pull these two out and have them on a local web browser to render through quicker. So let me go through and dig through here, but effectively I'm going to sit there and just dig through the results to find the uh, note name. And we can confirm it going through the, the full pull off of the file scan uh, that I did. Okay, I think I stumbled upon it. It's underneath the behavior and then files written. So there is restore-my-files.txt off of the... I forget which one this was. I think this was the IMG because I think it was the one I copied first. Either which way they should come through. Um, I did not see those actually denoted in underneath relationship so it's all behavior but I'll go through see as to whether or not if it's actually something that shows up in the file scan yeah so the IMG is where I'm pulling most of this and then underneath behavior as opposed to relations okay so again the the, the pre-established beginning of the volatility command. Um, so we left off with dump files, so that's been replaced with file scan, space, vertical line, space, grep, space, restore, dash, my, dash, files, dot, text. Um, so the process should be, it will go through, it will check, uh, it will run file scan against the image that we've previously specified the lockbit.vmem. Grep will go through and pick out any instances of restore-my-files.txt and give us where it happens to reside. And then we can see about trying to actually pull. Interesting. Nothing, apparently. How about just restore my files without the text? I guess where that's going, so how about is there a restore at all according to file scan? System restore, then nah, not quite what I need.
Is there a restore my? <sighs> there is not. How about just the word files? Which, of course, is going to hit everything that involves program files. I might have to go back to the drawing board on this one and see what else effectively might shake out. Because apparently we, at least from the image, we didn't get any restore my files dot text. I mean, I'm still waiting on this last grep for file scan to kick off. Well, I mean, if it's going to be a text file, I suppose what we could do is just, okay, run grip for anything .txt. We'll probably get a lot of different things, but, I mean, if I don't get anything restore my files, it looks like this is supposed to create a text file. I mean, we may just have to kind of slog through a bit of results. But effectively, this is how we would go through if it wasn't as properly named. We'd go through, pull the files, run them through VT, and see what basically shakes out. Not that the, again, the renaming of all the files as .lockbit isn't obvious enough. But, again, in preparation that we didn't have something like this in place. Okay, so where do we sit then? What's left? We need to figure out what the TLSH. And apparently that is denoted. Let me get this out of here. In the virus total results, or at least it should. So it's probably going to be underneath details. Since this is usually where you would find the MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, SSDeep. So we should have that here. Right here. So it is listed underneath. Now the question is, I've got two different samples. I've got the IMG and the DAT. So I guess we'll have to try one and then the other, assuming that they're different. Um, obviously the MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, and most of the other ones will likely be different. So I would actually be rather impressed if the TLSH was the same between the two samples. But I think I've got to go through and redo captions on this for some reason. So I'm going to run through all that. Last time it took about two minutes of running through and clicking captions. So rather than capture it on video recording. Yeah, so the TLSH is different between both. And as, as I don't know which one they're going to want to use, we're just going to start with the, the IMG. And we will see as to how this plays out. All right, so apparently it is not the IMG that, uh, that they want. So here is the dat file and the generated TLSH for that.
Hang on. I already submitted this answer. And that's starting in 1-4. Okay, I didn't really think that I'd submit it. Let me double check. Yeah, this is adding a space to the front and the back. Although I'd figure if that really made a difference, it would have said, oh, you're, well, you're close. We see something that we recognize in here. So here's the other one. Interesting. Yeah, and so we need to actually find the ransom note because we're going to need to sit there and pull this from there because we need the SHA-256 of it. Oh, and I don't know what we're going to do in regards to this. They look like they end reasonably the same. Frank Echo 96666, bravo. Well, okay, no, there is a difference. One ends in 6 Bravo 07, the other one is Alpha Bravo 07. Alright, I have to figure out what's going on with this. And going through and just trying to do TXT did not give me anything useful, that is, in regards to any of this. Um, so now I'm trying restore. If that doesn't work, then we should also have, um, if we can't do it with file scan, we can try the master file table parser or MFT parser and see as to whether or not if that will at least give us an entry for those particular aspects as to whether or not if we'll be able to sit there and pull anything that'll be the interesting aspect but stay hopeful that We'll come up with something for restore-my-files.txt. But, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so the files don't show up doing a file scan, but if you do MFT parser, you do end up seeing that they are there, at least according to the parser. But because there are no addresses, we're not going to be able to extract it that way. So, which made me think, okay, the end result is, is that we need to secure the M or the SHA-256 hash of these particular entities. So maybe virus total again will have the metaphorical answer for us. And yes, if we take a look at the files dropped, we can expand out one of the restore-my-files.txt and we'll see that effectively all these have the same exact hash. The same exact SHA-256 hash. So if we just take what we copied and run it through Even though that's the sample. Oh. Some weird formatting going on. So there's spaces before and after. Nope. Yeah, that should be the SHA-256 of it.
And of course, there's no match for that. Uh, if we take one of the other samples and go to behavior, the IMG as opposed to the DAT, maybe that makes a difference. Apparently it does. That is a different version. So if I chop out the before and after space, Hmm. Well, that's kind of a kick in the posterior. Because <sighs> it doesn't show up. So I'm going to nuke that. We're just going to try this again. Firing off the results. I suppose maybe it could be that... Maybe this, even though it's recommended profile, it's actually wrong, and that's why we're not getting everything that we probably should. Maybe? Uh, we'll wait and see. Okay, so we have update. The TLSH. At least the valid one. The question is, how did we get that? Well, we got it from this hash here. Which is executable 900.exe. Like, okay, what's executable 900? So, the, uh, let's see, what's up? So, the mal.exe that was running had a PID of 900. We grabbed the disk copy, or at least what was recorded, at least in the file scan. But if we do a proc dump specifying PID, so again, the mal.exe on C users Josh desktop. Basically, tell it to dump to our slash tmp directory, and everything comes out. Is what gives us the executable 900. We take that, has different hash, run it through, and I'm willing to bet that if we go and dig through behavior, we will find a different hash for the. Ransom note, since we can't seem to find it utilizing file scan. So if we transition this over to local copy, this breaks out, we go to behavior. And because that's effectively what we're down to now. We were able to get that from there, since that's the executable 900 on the details. Yeah, then we need the ransom note. Well, if that's our valid sample from this, then it makes sense that this is going to be specifically what we're looking for. We 
just have to find a copy of something. I'll re recover my files. Files drop, there we go. It's going to give us starting in 7322, ending in 23 delta 1. Additional spaces. And let's try this one. <laughs> well, not a ruckus. Apparently not. Yeah, that's executable 900. Was it one of the questions? What minor attack ID for privilege escalation? Was it five? So it's not going to be any of the sub points. So what? T ten fifty three. We're very close to the right answer. That would be the technique, but and that's five characters like what's specified, but for whatever reason. And then we have persistence, let me guess. Oh. even though it's likely going to be a run key. Could it be this? X O one X A D P O zero one underneath the behavior. It's 
due to the fact that so software Microsoft Windows current version run so it's run run once and run once ex I believe to denote um, persistence in the registry I mean there are other tricks you can do too but that's the most common aspect then obviously this would be the key or sub key and then the, the value would be probably pointing to does it actually break down what it was set to sample path yeah so wherever this thing was actually dumped so c users user downloads executable 900.exe but yet the portion is not valid for that Well, I suppose I could just take it, run it, find one of the text files, and actually generate the hash off that. See as to whether or not if I get anything else. I've got the SHA-256 hashes thus far that I've found recorded. Let's see if something else shakes out. But All right, go through and pause this for time's sake. Okay, so we have this X01 xadp o zero one, and we got that from the virus total. So what if we wanted to find it using volatility? So we know that it it goes for a run key. So we perform the standard bull pi dash f lockbit dot vmem dash dash profile equals win seven sp one x eighty six. We do print key space dash capital K space double quote software slash Microsoft slash Windows slash current version slash run because we're looking for the run key in that location and it will go through break down the various aspects and lo and behold so C users Josh into user dot dat Contains the subsection again the X O one X A D P zero or O zero one pointing to our favorite malware sample mal.exe on C users Josh desktop. So that's how we would get it in volatility. So then we're effectively left with trying to figure out the MITRE ATT&CK technique ID for privilege escalation and then the SHA-256 hash of the ransom note and trying to put those two together even though apparently the TLSH So the previous question, apparently that sample doesn't give us ransom note for this. And we can find evidence of it in the MFT parser, but we can't get anything off file scan. And when we try to run the samples, we don't get much of anything that we actually want of the three samples that we got for pulling it down from the quote-unquote file system and then pulling it out of quote-unquote memory, the running process. Apparently none of those give us what we want. So I'm at a loss as to what else to go through and do at this particular juncture, short of take the samples that I have, run them through, so take the, the process dump, and try to force feed that into something to get me a ransom note that I can then turn around and try to sit there and generate a shot 256 hash of. But then I'll have to, I guess, pull open the MITRE ATT&CK framework and take a closer look. Because apparently we're in the right direction revolving T1053.
That seems like that would fit because it's they're looking for a five character answer. It's a five character portion. Unless T1053 has now been superseded with something else. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, quick update by running through. Don't need to utilize the sub um, technique just has to be the base. So T1543 or wait 1543 yeah Windows service so then effectively the only thing that we have left is figuring out the SHA-256 hash of the ransom note. Of course, that also makes me wonder, outside of average total, is there any other way to sit there and calculate the trend micro locality sensitive hash? I mean, it's the first time I actually have had any idea or any sort of introduction to it. I mean, it's not one that typically comes up with anything that I'm aware of. I mean, impash, sure. MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, those are the, the gold standards, effectively. But TLSH, no. But yeah, still trying to sit there and come up with some sort of way to try to grab the ransom note. And I think I'm effectively just down to if none of the hashes that are generated by running the stuff through VT actually work. Then I'm wondering as to whether or not if somewhere within the actual memory is going to be the... Um, text for the ransom note, something that could be taken and poked at and adjusted and everything else, but we'll see, we will see. Okay, got it. So I was on the right track, so from the dump to get executable 900, so basically process, they're dumping out that pit 900. <sighs> it is underneath the behavior. And I could not tell you how many hours. I took inside of the, I did strings with grep. Let me blow through here so I can show. So it's roughly what it should look like. It's like, okay, how'd you find it? Went through and did a grep for a mention of I think it was dot onion because most of these always end up going through Tor in some way so you get a dot onion address so went through did strings um, gripping for onion and then doing a dash capital C 15 to give me the 15 lines before that hit and after that hit, which is what we get. No. There. <laughs> Reversed. <clears throat> which gives us that aspect. Sat there, dumped the file out, created a SHA-256 of it. No go turned around 
and ran the sample. Even infected a couple of VMs of my own. Pulled down the ransom note, which is restore dash my dash files, like said, and then just flipped the URLs for what was in the actual strings of the VMEM file. No. It was, of all things, digging through underneath the behavior section and digging through all of the restore my files because it denotes doing this in virus total second to last file after digging through all of these the hash is different lo and behold that's hash used as the answer not actually going through and taking the VM. No, so there we go. <laughs> oh, this one was extremely difficult for this last particular portion. And only because of the fact of the SHA-256 hash aspect. So I was expecting more of the portion of either being able to pull it using file scan. I did try volatility 2 and 3. Um, have something from there to then be able to submit or to generate. Um, or even before going through all of the, the items underneath dropped underneath behaviors and virus total, I had gone through and actually tried to reconstruct several different versions of the ransom note itself. So let me come over here. So this is what I was going through and constructing because this is the, the address. The domains stayed consistent in terms of .onion or lockbitdecryptor.com, but the sections after the question mark changed. So I literally went through and tried to reconstruct it in order to sit there generate the SHA-256 hash, and then submit it. Which I think probably would have been a different way to approach this. It probably would have been closer to. Maybe I'll make the recommendation. Um, but yeah. I think this was marked as easy. And I'm not entirely sure that's quite accurate. I would probably say more on the medium. Um, probably move it on to hard as to whether or not to actually go to the extent um, <laughs> of literally digging through and trying to find the text itself to verify and then harvest a actual ransom note and then do the swap of the characters after the question mark for the two URLs, but that's just me. And I have been known to overthink and make things much more difficult at times. So, but no, this has been a, uh, a very, very good exercise. Um, and hopefully you've taking this with me and, you know, wasting an hour. <laughs> Hopefully you're playing it at 2x speed or higher. <clears throat> but hopefully, you know, this has been educational for you. 
been enjoyable to me. I always enjoy uh, memory forensics like this. Um, but So this has been the Lockbit Challenge on the Let's Defend platform. And with all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.